in Genesis 39, you're going to see this great story about Joseph. Joseph, one of the greatest pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ in all the Bible. And in Genesis 39, he's brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And it says in verse 2, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass as, he, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within, and she called him by the garment, by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of the, her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. And he came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he had heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. So Joseph, you saw that he endured the temptation. It turns out that he gets lied about and ends up getting put in prison anyway. But he endured the temptation. Joseph, the great type of the Lord Jesus in the Old Testament. And one of the ways he greatly pictures Jesus Christ is in his endurance during temptation. I want to use the story of Potiphar's wife and her attempted seduction on Joseph to illustrate how to evade temptation. One of the first things, one of the first temptations he, he uh, endured was he got through the temptation of his ego rising up. You see, in Genesis 39, 3 through 6, it said that Joseph prospered and became overseer of Potiphar's house. He was a goodly person and well-favored. However, it didn't get to his head. And here is a reason why. Because of he endured humbling experiences. Perhaps the Lord let Joseph go through the trenches because he didn't want him to be exalted above measure. So he let him be dropped down into a pit. A picture of hell. You know, back there in Genesis 37, 24, they put uh, Joseph down there in a pit. And it says there was no water in it. That pictures the rich man in hell. It pictures anybody in hell. Because what did the rich man do? He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. 
And John 19, 28, what did Jesus Christ say when he was on the cross? He said, I thirst. You see, he put him through hell to get him humble. If Joseph didn't allow himself to be humbled, he could have entered a place in his mind where he thought he deserved and was entitled to another man's wife because he was so much better. But he endured the temptation of his ego rising up. When you go through hard times and tribulations and afflictions, remember that God is using these to keep you from getting exalted above measure. You know, like the Apostle Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, it said, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So you see, count the bad things and the tribulations you go through a blessing. It's keeping you from getting your ego puffed up. When you go through hard times, tribulations, and afflictions, remember that God is using these to keep you from getting exalted above measure. When you're going through tribulations, take pleasure in them. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, he, Paul said, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When you're going through tribulations, take pleasure in them. The Lord may be humbling you to save you from your future destruction. Because your ego can get so out of hand, you'll self-destruct. Just like in 1 Timothy 3, 6, one of the qualifications for a bishop is not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So one of the temptations Joseph had would, would have been his ego rising up, but he endured humbling experiences to keep that from happening. Another thing, another temptation he endured was eyelids casting a net. You see, in Genesis 39, 7, look what it says about Potiphar's wife. It says in Genesis 39, 7, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. And she's not meaning telling a lie. She's coming after him like she's a harlot. But you know what? He evaded the snare. When Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph, she was hunting for precious life. As it talks about in Proverbs 6 and verse 25, talking about this evil woman, look at Proverbs 6, 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Her eyelids cast a net, for by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go up on hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. See, that would have been Joseph if he didn't endure the temptation. So, Potiphar's wife, she's using her eyelids for a net. She's hunting for precious life. As a natural man, Joseph was most likely tempted by her beauty. As a natural man, it would have been a pleasure to lie with the adulteress, just like Hebrews 11.25. Choosing rather, uh, Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There's pleasure in sin for a season. And it would have been a pleasure for Joseph to lie with Potiphar's wife. The problem, it wasn't his wife. Joseph realized the bait may look good, but not as good as the freedom from the consequences of following the flesh. The freedom of 
not having to deal with the bondage of sin and the consequences that go along with that sin was much better than the temptation. You know, in Proverbs 7, 27, talking about the adulterous woman, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And Joseph realized the bait looks good, but where it leads doesn't look good. And you see the uh, Potiphar's wife probably had on the attire of an harlot, a pretty face and wanton eyes. But those are deadly weapons for the strange woman to catch the prey. Your weapon is looking the other way. In Proverbs 4.25, it says, Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. That's your weapon is, just don't look. Because her eyelids are going to cast a net for you, and you're going to walk right into it. So, Joseph evaded some things. He evaded the his ego possibly rising up. He endured that temptation. He dodged the eyelids, casting a net at him. And the next one is enticing words. In Genesis 39, 7, she tried to beguile him with words. She came to him and said, lie with me. But you know what he did? He enforced the right thing. As the adulterous woman in Proverbs Genesis 39, 7 says that day by day, every day, with much fair speech, Potiphar's wife threw herself at Joseph. And just like the adulterous woman in Proverbs 7, 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. So you know what? Joseph had to come back with words that enforce the right thing the most notable phrase he said was how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god in genesis 39 9 and although joseph didn't have a bible i'm sure he heard of his great grandfather abraham's story about sarah and abimelech you see the lord came to abimelech in a dream and said thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife in Genesis 20 and verse 3. You see, Abraham had lied about his wife, Sarah, told everybody she was his sister. And so Abimelech took her, and he would have lied with her. But the Lord came to him in a dream and said, You're a dead man. That's another man's wife that you got there. And I'm sure Joseph knew the story. And Joseph didn't want to be a dead man. So consider the word of God on the issue before you even think about flirting with another man's wife. You're going to have to enforce the right words when faced with this temptation. Get your own wife. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Go get your own. Don't get somebody else's. There's plenty of fish in the sea, as they say. You don't have to get somebody else's fish. So he evaded the enticing words, the eyelids casting a net, his ego rising up. And next he evaded the excitement of the forbidden. Look at Genesis 39, 8 through 9. Genesis 39, 8 through 9. It says, But he refused, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what if not what is with me in the house? And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass that she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened unto her to lie by her or to be with her so you see it was the excite there would have been the excitement of the forbidden you see there was none greater in the house than joseph potiphar hadn't kept back anything from joseph except his wife so she would have been the only forbidden thing just like 
Adam and Eve, they had the whole garden except for one tree. So there was the excitement of the forbidden. A temptation is the excitement of what is you're not really not supposed to have. But you know how he endured this temptation? He enjoyed what he had. Joseph had been made overseer in Genesis 39.5. Potiphar had put everything he had into his hand. The blessing of the Lord was on everything for Joseph's sake. Genesis 39.6. What more could Joseph need? The reason you aren't attracted to your wife anymore is because you're busy looking at everyone else's wife. You're looking at the forbidden. And you're, you're falling into the excitement of the forbidden. You're going to have to learn to enjoy what you have. You're going to have to learn to be content. Hebrews 13 and verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't covet another man's wife. Exodus 20, 17. You're going to have to be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be content with what you have. Learn what that whatsoever state you're in to be content. And Philippians 4 and verse 11. Look what Paul says about it. He says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Just be content with what you've got. That's how you can endure the temptation of taking something that's not yours. Be like Joseph and have godliness with contentment because it's great gain, 1 Timothy 6.6. 6. Just enjoy what you have. Enjoy the portion that the Lord has given you and those things that's not yours and especially those forbidden things, it's not going to be nowhere near as much of a temptation. Now, the next thing Joseph endured was endless chances. In Genesis 39.10, it talks about the opportunity for Joseph to lie with Potiphar's wife presented itself day by day. Every day. Imagine being Joseph and every day a beautiful woman that was another man's wife was tempting you to lie with her. But Joseph was efficient in refusing sin. Imagine being a single man and every day a beautiful woman was throwing herself at your feet. Many would consider that a blessing, but it's actually a curse. Joseph's temptation was so strong because it was every day. As a born-again believer in spiritual warfare, you are going to be tempted daily. Paul says you have to reckon yourselves dead, Romans 6, 11. He said, I die daily, 1 Corinthians 15, 31. You have to wake up every day and say, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to do this for the Lord. I'm going to put down the flesh. I'm not going to listen to the devil. As a born-again believer in spiritual warfare, you're going to be tempted daily. But you can escape the temptation. 1 Corinthians 10.13 And 1 Corinthians 10.13 Look what Paul says. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So you can bear it. The opportunity is going to present itself. The whorish woman will still be at work tomorrow, day by day. Women are going to continue to dress immodestly. The net is going to be spread day by day. However, you know the truth, so the net is spread in your sight. If you get trapped, you're willingly walking to your captor. This net can seem like a magnet, so you're going to have to stay in fellowship with the Lord. You're going to have to cleanse your way with the Lord. Psalm 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? You're going to have to cleanse your way because the adulteress lie, lays in wait at every corner. Proverbs 7, 12. So you see, the world is set up with temptation, mines, bombs, booby traps, disguised in plain sight. However, the Lord has 
Set up ways to escape the temptation. Keep your ego from rising up. Dodge the eyelids that cast a net. Wear earplugs around enticing words. Don't get drawn away by the excitement of the forbidden. And turn down the daily endless chances which are thrown at your flesh. You can escape the temptation.